morning, gladiators. Today is Friday, May 21st. Today we're going to um, go into depth up, um, with our archetypes. Um, yesterday you did a scavenger hunt, which we will have some time to finish today. So an archetype just means pattern. And so Carl Jung was the first person who um, applied this term of archetype to literature. And every story has universal patterns. Many things that happen that are similar over and over um, throughout um, humankind. And he felt, Carl Jung felt, that um, the human mind collect, contained this collective unconscious that we are shared um, with all humans. Sort of a first memory. And so an archetype would mean that these patterns occur in many situations. There are symbols, um, they're universal. So think about what um, qualities a person has to have to be a hero. Do you have a favorite fictional hero? Have you ever read stories or novels this year that had a hero? So our first um, archetype is a hero. So th the first pattern that we're going to look out look at is a, the hero and they are normally the protagonist of the story they often have a past that it might be mysterious they could be a leader of some kind um, and they often endure pain and sorrow that makes them become a leader so take a moment and watch what makes a hero go ahead and press pause on this video there are different types of hero warrior epic tragic and romantic so you're going to also watch this video. We're going to be doing lots of video watching till the end of the year about the host of heroes. The first hero is a warrior hero. This was developed in the Anglo-Saxon culture. Um, the hero has to be strong, intelligent, and courageous. They're willing to face any odds, any struggle, any fight to the death for glory and for the people that they are trying to protect. And they are also still humble and kind. The first <clears throat> hero of this kind um, was written in a story called Beowulf. And this would be um, an example of a warrior hero. So Beowulf is considered one of the oldest surviving poems in the English language. The author of the poem is unknown. And the poem is generally referred to as Beowulf. It is a story of a young Yiddish warrior who comes to the aid of Horthgar, the king of Danes. His kingdom is being terrorized by a monster named Grendel. Beowulf uses his epic strength and bravery to slay Grendel and, um, and then also slay Grendel's a very angry mother in her underwater lair. His fame spreads, and as he returns, he is given... Um, treasure from his king and he later becomes the king of the gates and he rules for 50 years but then a dragon comes and poses a great threat to to his land and they set off to defeat it he succeeds in slaying the dragon but unfortunately he dies in the process and so they have a movie um, of Beowulf, remember it's an it's an epic poem. It's a very very long poem, which you might read in high school or possibly college. And so this is the trailer. Um, or no, I take it back. This is just a clip from the movie when Beowulf approaches um, the land where he is to slay the monster. So go ahead and take a moment, and watch this clip. Quick clip. So this video is about the evolution of heroes through British literature. And so it talks about how heroes have evolved and changed um, in um, Britain. So an epic hero is our second hero. So we should be taking notes on these different types of heroes in our LMB. An epic hero is um, with the tragic hero. The Greeks were first to define the protagonist known as an epic hero. These are heroes of a tragedy who evoke the audience with the sense of heroism and legendary, awe-inspiring love. It is a man whose 
fortune is brought about by their admired characteristics. Um, there are many famous Greek epic heroes, such as the Odyssey and the Iliad. Superman, Spider-Man, Luke Skywalker, Harry Potter, and Simba are all examples of epic heroes. Sometimes they possess supernatural powers, and they use supernatural forces um, to intervene. And they sometimes have long extended speeches, um, and they're responsible for vast areas of land. So the Odyssey is a story written by Homer. They, it is also an epic poem, a really, really long poem um, that kind of reads like a novel. Um, and it is one of the oldest surviving examples of Western literature. It happens chronologically, so in sequence of time, and it actually happens after events that occurred in the first epic poem, which is the Iliad. And so um, there are a group of soldiers that are traveling home from the Trojan War. Um, the Iliad is tragic, whereas the Odyssey has much more of an adventurous feel. It's a quest that is centered around returning home rather than going out to fight the battle. Um, it has smaller quests and smaller adventures. Odysseus is the hero in the story of the Odyssey, written by Homer, and him and his friends, um, they come across a lair of cyclops, water sirens, they're tempted by these beautiful women, and they fall into the underworld. And so there is a really cool um, remake, modern remake of the Odyssey. So first I want you to take a moment and watch the summary of the Odyssey. It's gonna just talk about the, the things that um, Odysseus has to um, go through. So he sees a cyclops and he, he lands on an island and is, is tempted by um, the sirens for several years. He falls in love um, with, I think it's Helen possibly. He makes these um, creatures of the water angry at him. He's in a storm. So he goes through all these different um, adventures on his way home. And then they made this movie called Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And it is based upon Homer's The Odyssey, but set in like a southern um, time. Um, so it has a southern archetype and pop culture imagery. And so it's just kind of a fun version of Homer, Homer's The Odyssey. So take a moment and create um, the discussion post answer, which is what heroes have we read about this this year? There should be this year in ELA, and how are they a hero? So describe their um, characteristics. So the last hero we're gonna talk about is a tragic hero. That's a type of character that is um, um, a hero, it's a protagonist, but they have a flaw. Um, they often make mistakes, and their mistakes often lead to their downfall or possibly their death. Um, Aristotle was the first um, person to um, study um, this type of hero in Greek drama. The function of a tragic hero is to evoke sad emotions, pity, fear, which makes the audience um, feel what they're feeling, relieve them of their pent up emotions. So a, a catharsis is when you kind of like, to, you know, you, you get all those emotions out and so that you don't have to feel those negative feelings anymore. So it's kind of like purging you of these tragic feelings. And um, it gives the audience this type of wisdom to avoid such flaws or vices in their everyday lives. So Hamlet is a type of tragic hero, and that is a play written by Shakespeare. Hamlet is the prince of Denmark, and he is noble by birth, so he's a, he is prince, and he is driven to madness because his father was killed and came back to him as a ghost. And he's trying to tell Hamlet that uh, Claudius, which is his uncle, is the person that killed him um, while he was sleeping. 
and Hamlet it tries to make a plan to revenge his father. But he has a fatal flaw, as most tragic heroes do. And he um, is in constant contemplation. So he's always second-guessing himself. He's always brooding, and he's always like thinking about what could he do, what he couldn't do, if he's making the right choices, and so he... He's never very, he's not very confident, and so this constant second guessing ends up being his fatal flaw. He writes this, or he says this soliloquy, which is a long speech, um, to be or not to be. And he's not sure if he wants to do this or he's not going to do this, um, but in the end, he falls to a bloodbath and he touches the heart of the audience by highlighting the most primal fear, which is death. Davy Jones from the Pirate of the Caribbean is also an example of a tragic hero. He's the most modern example of this type of hero. He is a sea captain, but he falls in love with uh, Calypso. Oh, this Calypso was in the Odyssey, the sea goddess Calypso. But Calypso breaks his heart, and this makes him very angry, enraged, bitter, and so he grows into this really weird humanoid type octopus and he leads his crew onto raids um, um, on the ship called the Flying Dutchman. And because he has this broken heart, um, suffered from the hands of Calypso, he uses it to um, do evil things to, to you know, people um, that he comes across on the sea. And so you could take a moment to look at Davy Jones and Calypso's story there. Um, Severus Snape from Harry Potter is also a tragic hero. And so if you have, if you plan on reading Harry Potter, all of the books, um, don't watch this video because it's going to give you a spoiler alert. It's going to tell you why he's a tragic hero. So if you're just kind of on the beginning of the novels and you're, you see him as a bad guy, well, there, there's a he has a flaw to him. He has a reason why he's that way. And so this video kind of takes all of the clips from Snape, um, puts them together so that we can understand who he is and where he is coming from. Um, so you could take a moment and watch that. It's kind of a long one. It's a 14-minute video. So we're going to stop here. There should be a stop sign. Uh, we're going to stop here, and we're going to continue on with the anti-hero, uh, which is our last hero that we're going to study, um, the type of archetype. Don't forget to complete your discussion post. Take a moment and um, finish your um, scavenger hunt from yesterday. I think I should have answered some of those questions for you. And then we're going to um, move on to the hero's journey, uh, and we're going to talk about that towards the end of the year. And I hope that you have a wonderful day, Gladiator.